Hello my dear students, I welcome you all for SVK tutorials. As some of the students has been requested to do uh, the vector spaces of another question paper. So I am solving uh, those uh, questions in this video. So those who are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel immediately. Also, I request you to share this video to with your friends and press like button. Moving on to question number 5a. So let V equal to R cube be a vector space and consider subset w of v consisting of vectors of the form a a square b where the second component is the square of the first is w is a subspace of v so what we require to prove the given a vector w which is a subset of v what we require to prove here given a w so that w is a subspace of v or not we need to prove so what is the subspace definition we should know that so first we need to show that it is a null space then we need to show that it is a vector space if these two things has been proved then we can say that the given vector is a subspace of v so go moving on to the solution let v equal to r cube they have given the domain as r cube R cube equal to A, B, C such that A, B, C belongs to R. Then W is defined as what? A, A square B such that A, B A belongs to R. So first I am going to prove that null space that is a null vector. So consider A, B values as 0, 0, 0 which belongs to W. How I am saying that W means here you are going to take plus A equal to 0 and A square will be also what? You are going to get back with 0 itself. So therefore, the first condition will be satisfied. Moving on to the second condition, I am considering W1 as what? A1, A1 square, B1, which belongs to W. W2 belong, is equal to A2, A2 square, B2, which belongs to W. So then I will find out some of those two vectors, W1 plus W2. So just a vector A, W1, I have written vector W2. So some of these two will be uh, a1 plus a2, a1 square plus a2 square, b1 plus b2, which does not belong to w. How I am saying that which does not belong to w? So if I consider a value as a1 plus a2, then a square will be what? Squaring on both the side, I am going to get a square equal to a1 plus a2 whole square. After expanding, what you are going to get? a square plus 2ab plus b square, right? Which is not equal to what? a1 square plus a2 square so that's why we say that w1 plus w2 is does not belongs to w as addition property is not satisfied under vector we can say that w is not a subspace of v i have proved this uh, problem generally so you can go with particular value by considering w1 as uh, 1 2 3 w1 as 1 2 3 and w2 as uh, uh, 4 5 6 4 5 6 then adding these two what you are going to get adding these two consider w1 plus w2 w1 plus w2 what you are going to get 1 plus 4 will be 5 2 plus 4 will be 7 3 plus uh, 6 will be 9 so next uh, uh, square of this will be what if you consider a equal to 5 a equal to 5 so then squaring uh, so what you are going to get 5 square which is equal to 25 which is not equal to what 7 hence it is proved you can go with in simple manner proving this uh, problem moving on to the next problem find the basis and dimension of the subspace spanned by the vectors 2 4 2 1 minus 1 0 1 2 1 0 3 1 in v3 space so they have given three dimensional vector space uh, we need to find uh, the basis and uh, dimension for that so consider the given uh, vectors then write down that vectors in a matrix so i have transformed to matrix so vector matrix a is equal to 2 4 2 1 minus 1 0 1 2 1 0 3 1 now i will be reducing to row reduced echelon form rr ef row reduced echelon form so therefore so i am going to get uh, uh, from that after reducing this by applying an operation r1 dash changes to r1 by 2 first row has been divided by 2 so therefore i am going to get 1 2 1 the rest of the elements has been retained as it is then i am applying the operation for uh, r2 and r3 using r1 so that is what the operation i have done so 
R2 and R3 rows has been affected here. We got this matrix. So afterwards, I will make an uh, operation for R4. So R4 will be affected with R2. So I got this is the final matrix, which is of row reduced echelon form. We can divide by this minus 3 also. Nothing to worry. What is the basis? Therefore, the basis are nothing but the first two rows. The first two rows are the basis of the given uh, vectors. So, what is the dimension? Dimension is the number of non-zero rows. How many non-zero rows we have? So, therefore, non-zero rows are 2. Therefore, dimension of the vector A is nothing but 2. So, this is what, uh, this is how we can find out basis and dimension. Moving on to question number uh, 5C. Find the kernel and range of the linear operator T of x comma y comma z, which is defined as x plus y comma z of R3 to R2. So the given uh, dimension is uh, transforming mean from R3 to 3 dimension to 2 dimension. The, we need to uh, get the transformation. So for that reason, let, let us consider x, y, z belongs to null space of T, nullity of T. So therefore, T of x comma y comma z is equal to 0, which is has been transformed. We need to transform to two dimensional space. For that reason, I have taken 0 comma 0. That is what I have written here. R3 transform to R2. So T of x comma y comma z is defined as what? X plus y comma z, which is equal to 0. Then equate each coordinate. So x plus y will be equal to 0 and z will be equal to 0. That is what I have done. Then I got the value of x as what? Minus y and z equal to 0. Therefore, I can say that when I put x equal to minus y, minus y plus y will be 0 and z equal to 0. Therefore, it has been, it has been satisfied with the validity of t will be what? x comma minus x comma 0. That is what kernel of t. This is what the kernel of t. This is how we need to find the kernel of t of any kind of problem. So next moving on to range, how to find the range means. So to find the range of linear operator, we need to see the dimension. So it is transforming from R3 to R2 domain, R3 to R2 domain. So therefore, we know the standard basis of R3 that is E1, E2, E3 is been de is has been defined by 100, 010, 001, right? So now substitute the values of x, y, z. We are going to get uh, t of e1 equal to 1, 0, t of e2 equal to 1, 0, t of e3 equal to 0, 1. How it is come means uh, we, we know the standard basis of R3 is nothing but e1 equal to what? 1, 0, 0. So just substitute the values of x, x plus y, comma z. That's what I have done here. x value equal to 1 and y is 0, z equal to 0. After simplification, I am going to get 1, 0. Similarly, if, uh, if I go for uh, t of e2, that will be 0, 1, 0. Substituting that value, I am going to get 1, 0. So, t of e3, e3 is defined as 0, 0, 1. Substituting those value, I am going to get 0, 1. So, therefore, r of t can be written as, range of t can be written as, x times of 1, 0, plus y times of 1, 0, comma, z times of 0, 1. So, if I multiply this, you are going to get x plus y comma z such that x, y, z belongs to R. This is what the range of the given problem. This is how to find the range of the given problem. Moving on to the next question. Question number 6a. Let f of x equal to 2x square minus 5 and g of x equal to x plus 1. Show that the function h of x equal to 4x square plus 3x minus 7 lies in the subspace span f g of p2 okay so they have been provided f of x g of x and they are asking to show that h of x lies in the subspace span f g of p2 what is this p2 p2 is nothing but a quadratic equation p2 is nothing but a quadratic equation we need to consider a linear combination i need to express h of x in a linear combination of f and g that is what i have done write down what is given first write down what is given f of x g of x h of x then h of x can be expressed as linear combination of 
a in a times of f of x plus b times of g of x then note down what is f of x and g of x so after substituting the f of x and g of x so expand that i am going to get h of x is what note down that then i will be separating x square x and constant term so equating those terms i will be getting the values of a and b i am getting the values of a and b after substituting the values of a and b in the first equation i can say that the given h of x as a linear combination of f of x and g of x that is what i have expressed here so thus it shows that thus it shows that h of x lies in the subspace span f g of p2 so concluding like this you can have the answer moving on to next problem 6th b let p n be the vector space of real polynomial function of degree less than or equal to n show that the transformation t p2 to p1 defined by t of a x square plus b x plus c which is equal to a plus b times of x plus c is linear now i need to show, prove that it is linear so to prove that it is linear just we need to prove two things that is vector space that is uh, transformation of u plus v will be equal to transformation of u plus transformation of v and transformation of alpha scalar, scalar multiplication one is addition one is scalar multiplication if these two satisfies then we can say that this transformation is linear so already they have been provided what is the transformation from uh, p2 to p1 so here quadratic we were having so it has been transformed to linear so to show that t is uh, p2 to p1 is linear so that is what i need to prove i have given here so consider u equal to in the same manner i am defining u and v as what u equal to a1 x square plus b1 x plus c1 so tra transformation of u will be what transformation of that function called a1 x square plus b1 x plus c1 which will be equal to a1 plus b1 x plus c1 so see the definition here a x square plus b x plus c can be written as a plus b coefficient of x square plus coefficient of x that is what you are going to have a plus b times of x plus c that is what i have done a1 plus b1 times of x plus c1 similarly for transformation of v in terms of a2 b2 c2 i can write that as a2 plus b2 times of x plus c2 so after defining transformation of u and v so find out transformation of u plus v so i have considered transformation of u plus v then i will be considering the coefficients of x square as a1 plus a2 then consider the coefficient of x that is b1 plus b2 then consider constant term called c1 plus c2 and now i can make use of the given definition that is transformation of ax square plus bx plus c it is of that form using that definition we can write that as a1 plus a2 plus b1 plus b2 times of x plus c1 plus c2 name that as equation 1 that is what transformation of u plus v now find out transformation of u plus transformation of v so note down what is transformation of u what is transformation of v after noting down apply the definition i have applied the definition transformation of that can be written as a1 plus b1 x plus c1 plus of a2 plus b2 plus uh, times of x plus c2 then take out the coefficients of x take out the coefficients of x that is what i have done here a1 plus b1 plus a2 plus b2 times of x plus c1 plus c2 so name that as equation 2 from equation 1 and equation 2 i can say that transformation of u plus v will be equal to transformation of u plus transformation of v now consider transformation of alpha u so alpha times of u i have written then multiply this alpha inside alpha a1 x square plus alpha b1 x i have left out x here note down x plus alpha c1 so therefore applying the definition i can get alpha a1 plus alpha b1 times of x plus alpha c1 name this as equation 3 that is transformation of alpha u now consider 
alpha times of t of u alpha times of t of u will be this transformation of u can be applied definition here apply the definition it can be written as a1 plus b1 times of x plus c1 so then multiply by alpha you are going to get alpha a1 plus alpha b1 times of x plus alpha c1 name that as equation 4 so from comparing 3 and 4 we can say that transformation of alpha u will be equal to alpha times of transformation of u so hence we can say that t is linear from p2 to p1 we have converted t2 to p1 so moving on to the last question of uh, the model question paper verify the rank nullility theorem for the linear transformation t v3 to v2 defined by the transformation t of x comma y comma z equal to y minus x comma y minus z what i need to verify here i need to verify rank nullility theorem what is rank nullility theorem states rank of t plus nullility of t will be equal to dimension of u so from the given expression transformation uh, t is given as v3 to v2 therefore dimension of u will be what 3 the dimension of u will be 3 here so transformation of xyz has been defined as y minus x y y minus z so after noting down the given definition go with standard basis t of e1 as i told earlier t of e1 will be equal to t of 1 comma 0 comma 0 just substitute those values of x y z in the given definition so 0 minus 1 comma 0 minus 0 which will be equal to minus 1 comma 0 transformation of e2 will be transformation of 0 comma 1 comma 0 which will be 1 comma 1 transformation of e3 will be 0 comma minus 1 now consider this transformation standard basis transformation to matrix form i have noted down that in matrix form now reduce this to row reduced echelon form that is what i am applying row operation so minus 1 0 here we have so just apply the operation for r2 r2 changes to r2 plus r1 so 1 minus 1 will be 0 1 plus 0 will be 1 so therefore i got 0 1 in the second row retain as it is third row apply the operation for third row make sure this term should be 0 therefore r3 plus r2 becomes the third row has been 0 so looking at this matrix i can find out the rank and nullility rank is nothing but the number of non zero rows nullility is nothing but the number of zero rows so the number of non zero rows is 2 and the number of zero rows is 1 therefore i can say that rank of t plus nullility of t will be equal to dimension of u since it is 2 plus 1 will be equal to 3 hence the rank nullility theorem has been verified this is very much easy topic to score if and only if you know the concept very well and how to solve the problems very well so i i hope you all understood the problem if you have any doubts you can put a comment i wish you all the very best for your upcoming examination thank you for watching this uh, youtube don't forget to share this and also finally don't forget to press like button thank you all